Please turn your attention to the word provided by Dr. King. Praise the Lord. I've been too, through too much not to worship him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is good. And he's good all the time. And all the time he's good. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you for your bountiful blessing. I thank you, Lord, for this day. This is another day that you've made, and we rejoice, and we are glad. We are glad. Even though there's a host of things going on around us that could pull from our gladness, but this joy that I have, the world didn't give it. The world can't take it. The devil didn't give it. The devil can't take it. This joy that I have, the Lord gave it to me. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this time of sharing the word of God. Bless it, Lord. Anoint these words. Allow it to be transformative, to change the lives of people for your glory and our good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Exodus 3, verse 7, just a few verses. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from the, that land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Pezzarites and the Havites and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the children of Israel has come to me and I have also seen the oppression which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? So he said, I will certainly be with you, and this shall be a sign to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall, sh you shall serve me or serve God on this mountain. This is the words of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. During uh, the last few months, many of us have suffered from ESD. ESD is election stress disease. And it's actually a, uh, a real word or a real phrase. Um, I heard it on the news, and a psychologist was on the uh, news being interviewed uh, that this was a real condition, that people were being stressed out by the election. Uh, we've been preoccupied uh, uh, with it and just looking forward to it to be open or to be over. And things had become so complex with walk-in ballots and mail-in ballots and on-site ballots. And then having to wait four days after Tuesday to call who would be the winner, the next president of the United States. And Saturday morning, hallelujah, I was having breakfast with the wife. And we were talking about the election results. And Saturday morning, I looked up and I said, I think they're announcing it. Well, congratulations to President-elect Joseph R. Biden. But it's just been stressful, to say the least. And I know that for over 75 million Americans, this has been a time of celebration. However, there's a reality. Approximately 70 million people voted for the incumbent, which means that this country is a divided country and people are grappling with moving forward. We're still battling with the cure or control of COVID-19 virus and people are dying daily from its effects. There's still a protest against systemic racism, which is interwoven into the fabric of America that's even caused the body of Christ, church folk, 
Christians, believers, to be at odds with one another. It's, a, it's disappointing that many believers have co-opted their prophetic voice, and some have had to come back on social media and to apologize for being a participant in a false prophetic narrative, meaning prophylying. Some have embarrassed the church by calling for angels from Africa to intervene in the election process. On the social justice front, we're still battling with poverty and the effects that limited resources have on families and communities, such as crime still because of the limited resources in communities, substandard education, poor to no health uh, and life insurance benefits, lack of jobs that pay over minimum wage, depreciated home values, which, by the way, minimizes the ability to transfer wealth of any real consequence. It's through property, it's through home ownership that you, tra you can transfer larger values of wealth to your children and to the next generation. But yes, we cried in the kitchen on Saturday morning when we heard the news. We were excited about a potential reset. We realized that there was a significant moment that we had witnessed. Families no longer had to be divided at the dinner table, and neighbors no longer had to be divided. People could be respectful, civil, and kind. We were thinking that maybe there's a reset, there's a new day. But the reality is, another reality is, this only happens when there's God's spirit intervening. And so the sermon today is a reminder that we need to, and as believers, take our eyes off of sometimes so much the social or societal issues and remember that God has called us to a, a, a purpose. We have a job to do. We have an assignment. We are here on assignment, and God expects for us to complete it. And so we want to be in the midst of all of the other things that try to grab our attention, focused on God, Christ, and his kingdom. Let's say that again, focused on God, Christ, and his kingdom. In the story today, due to a famine, Pharaoh uh, has uh, appointed Joseph to oversee the accumulating of the uh, resources so that they can be distributed as the the famine grew worse. At this time, Joseph also took it upon himself to bring his family, his family, into Egypt and live among the Egyptians. And everyone prospered. The Egyptians prospered as uh, they followed the plan of Joseph in securing the resources and then dispersing them. Everyone prospered, but there was a time that everyone is going to leave this place. And the Bible says in Exodus 1 and 6 that Joseph died and his brothers and all that generation. However, a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. Yes, he was a racist of a king. He wanted uh, the children of Israel to be killed because it seemed as if they were outgrowing the Egyptians. He began to stereotype them as a threat to national security, then decided to be mean, cruel, and indifferent, and created a system to subjugate and oppress. Sounds like something familiar, but we're talking about the Bible. They even tried illegal abortion and tried to kill the children. But uh, church, this is why I want us to focus on God, Christ, and his kingdom. Somebody was praying. Somebody was praying in the midst of all of the struggle that was going on in that third chapter of Exodus and that seventh verse. And the Lord said, I have surely seen and the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrow. Someone was praying. And so uh, there's several things that I want to show you uh, that 
uh, the text brings out that God does, but there are certain things that we need to do. One of the things is they were praying. In the midst of the pain and the sorrow, they were still at work, but they were believing, even though they did not see, but they believed that a, a answer was going to come. And God is challenging us as believers, though uh, we're wanting, how do you fix a, a 70 million person deficit? Uh, how do you uh, fix and, and cause people to to, to agree that racism has been a problem of subjugating a one ethnicity and we need to do something about it. How do you get people to cross the aisles of the Senate or the House? How do you get things done? Well, church, I want to tell you, even though, if you will, those in higher power seem to be so far away and so far removed, we've got to keep on praying. And we need to know something also. In the text, God says he sees their struggle. I have seen the oppression of my people. We need to remember as we're praying that God is near, and not only is he near, but God sees our struggle. There's nothing that blocks or obscures his view. God's got a 2020 vision or sight on your situation. Hallelujah, on your situation. So whatever you're going through, whatever mountain you're facing, whatever discrepancies are going on in your life, God sees. God not only sees, but he. In uh, we, we go on in verse seven. He heard their cry. He hears our cry. That. That, that term heard or hear means desiring emancipation. And so here, God hears our plea of God, deliver me from this stuff. Deliver me from this evil. Deliver me from this oppression. Deliver me from this bondage. John eight thirty six says to me, therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. How do I get freedom? I get it from Jesus. What do I need here? He has everything that we need. So he sees when we're plagued with incarceration, what has me bound, what has me in his grips, what has me handcuffed. Christ says, God says, I hear their cries for freedom. And who the Son sets free, uh, somebody ought to yell, Jesus set me free. That he is free indeed. So he sees our struggle. He hears our cry. He knows our sorrow. Church, this is the thing that I'm, I'm, I'm even before we're even having enough uh, wisdom to ask for divine intervention, God has already, he's never left us. He's never abandoned us. And he sees, he hears, and he knows. This term knows means he recognizes or he's acquainted with. Well, Isaiah 53 verses 3 through 5 says, he is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he was born our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Hallelujah. And by his stripes we are healed. So God not only sees our issues and hears our cries, but he knows our sorrow and he lets us know, listen, I'm right there. Keep your focus on me. Keep your focus on me. Don't lose your focus. Keep your focus on him. It's easy to get distracted, but I sense that God is still wanting the church to soar. This is the time for the church to be lifted up. This is the time for the church to bring God glory. I believe this is the time. This is the church's shining hour. That's why we don't have time for false prophetic or pathetic prophecy. We don't have time to be fighting one another. We've got to keep our eye or our focus on Jesus. Matter of fact, look at I, we, we, we we're doing something that I, I sense that a number of our members like to do. I know that uh, 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 Elder Reed likes to do it and uh, uh, someone else, a number of other people using acronyms. And an acronym for focus, I don't know who the author was, but I, I'm borrowing the acronym. It's F for follow, one for O, C for course, U for until, and S successful. Follow one course. 
until successful. Here throughout the Bible in Matthew, uh, seven times you'll see the term, the acknowledgement of Jesus telling the disciples to follow him. In Mark, four times. In Luke, four times. In John, seven times. Give you an example. In Matthew 4, 19, Jesus says, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. In Matthew 8, 22, he said, follow me and leave the dead to bury the dead. In Matthew 9 and 9, Jesus tells Matthew, come and follow me. Jesus also says, there's no one who is fit to follow me unless he takes up his cross and does so. And so we see that Follow one course until it's successful. And what's the course? I'm following Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And as I'm following Jesus, the songwriter got it right. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I'm following one course until it's successful. I'm following one course until he takes me from time to eternity. So while I'm still in time, I'm going to keep on believing. I've got to keep on trusting the Lord. He says without faith it is impossible to please God. I've got to keep on praying. The Bible tells me to pray without ceasing. I've got to keep on denying myself or fasting. I've got to keep reading the Bible. I've got to keep listening to the Holy Ghost. I've got to keep on living holy. I've got to keep on being spiritually productive. I've got to keep on loving one another. I've got to keep on forgiving others. I've got to to keep on supporting my church. I've got to keep on paying my tithes and offering. I've got to keep on blessing somebody. I've got to keep on encouraging something. But I listen, the Bible says, don't get weary in well doing, for you shall reap. I've got to keep my focus on the Lord. Follow one course until successful. I know that one day God is going to come. It's going to all be over. But I'm going to tell you, I don't want him to say you were all over the place. I want him to say you kept your focus. You kept on praying. You kept on preaching. You kept on fasting. You kept on directing. You kept on moving forward. You kept on lifting me up. Hallelujah. Keep on. Bible lets me know that soon and very soon, uh, it won't be long, we're going to see the Lord. I'm going to keep on following one course until successful, until he does me like he did the children of Israel. He promised to take them out. He says, I'm going to come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and bring them up. Hallelujah. God's in d desires to pull us from where we are and bring us up to a land, to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey. Hallelujah. Thank you. The Lord has, hallelujah, if we just keep our focus, he has blessing in mind. He has blessing in mind. And we're going to keep on trusting him. And therefore, follow one course until successful. Yeah, yeah. We're going to continue to pray for our leaders. We're going to continue to pray for this transition. We're going to continue to pray. But most importantly, keep our focus. Follow one course until successful. What is the course for a believer? Is to follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to pray. Some of us have gotten distracted. We've embraced a party. We've been a part of a group that said one party was devilish and the other party was uh, godly. None of the parties got it right. It's not a party that got it right or that we should be focusing. It's a person. And his name is Jesus, 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 hallelujah. Jesus never got caught up into all of that stuff. That's why I'm going to follow one course. I'm going to follow the path of Jesus. And so we're going to pray. We're going to pray for those that um, are part of that 75 million that there's no gloating that there's humility that there's love we're going to pray for the 70 million that there's no pain continued pain 
but that God allow, that they allow the Lord to heal them and that we all focus on following Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we have a lot of work to do down here and sometimes we get caught up in the mechanics of it. But Lord, let us continue to share the message. You didn't get caught up in the mechanics. You had a work that your father had sent you to do. And then you, a part of that work was to prepare those to come behind you. And you gave them a message that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth should not perish. Lord, help us to continue with the message to focus on one course until successful, until you take us home. And Lord, we want to hear, well done. So, Lord, for those of us that, uh, as we are seeking to move forward and seeking to get direction, keep on living godly, living holy, staying in the word, led by the Holy Spirit, and let God direct your life for his glory. In Jesus' name, amen. If there's anyone out there that does not know the Lord as their personal Savior, then we're going to encourage you to change that situation and embrace him as Lord and Savior. He loves you, and he loves you with an everlasting love. And so if you're out there, then if you would just bow your head and just pray after me these words. Lord, Lord, forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of rejecting you, and Lord, save me. Make me one of your children, your creation, your children. I recognize that I deserve death, but I accept the gift of God. I accept the gift of God, which is Jesus Christ. I believe that Jesus is the way, and I embrace that way. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you prayed believing, then you are born again. And if you have prayed that prayer, if you've in invited Jesus into your life, then we want you to contact us. Call us today, 708-331-8389. Call the office number and share your, your testimony. Let us contact you to bring you more information and share with you the walk with the Lord. For those of you who are born again and looking for a church, we just brought in a member on last week who is now a new member. We'll announce their information on next week. It'll, it should be, we want to put it in the next bulletin or the next newsletter and celebrate our new member. They'll be going through new members class and a host of other things. But we just thank God the church is growing. Hallelujah. If you are wanting to be a part of this growing church, then make the effort to do so. You contact us and we'll respond. We thank God for all of you. We uh, want to just encourage you to continue to give as you're giving. It's outstanding. This is an outstanding church. Outstanding. Your faithfulness is being seen. It's being seen by myself. It's seen by the Lord. I thank God. I'm honored to serve amongst you. Continue to do so. Your tithes and offering, whether it's Givelify, the Cash App, for J November and December, you can use your credit card. Uh, reach out to Sister Audrey uh, Walden, and she will help coordinate that effort with you. How you can reach her is just contact the church and give your number, and she will get in contact with you. All right, we're going to prepare to close out. We thank God that we have some rest now. We believe some peace. Continue to pray for those on that prayer list. Let's remember them in prayer, lift them up, encourage them. We're going to stand and be prepared to close out, and then our closing song. Father, we just thank you for this sermon. We thank you, Lord, that you're challenging us to redirect our focus, 
our focus has to be, it has to be on Jesus. Jesus is the only way. He's the answer. He's the only answer to the world today. The world looks for so many other things or people. Lord, we thank you that you're wanting to do something about our situation. You see, you hear, you know, and then you do. But you want us to respond in thanksgiving and worship. And so, Lord, help us to be more thankful even during this month as we're preparing for Thanksgiving, thankful and worshipful. In Jesus' name, we seal this prayer. Thank God. Amen. Have a blessed week. Thank you for joining our broadcast today. For additional information, please visit us on our website, our Facebook page, or Twitter. 